Yes. Um, I think like it's kind of like another answer to like, that question that she had. It's like, I think there's kind of like an ignorance that like people aren't really accepting of the fact that like it is a problem and that like kind of want to just like kind of dance around the problem and not actually acknowledge it. So I feel like getting over that barrier first and realizing like, hey, there's a problem, there is racism, there's discrimination towards a lot of people that really shouldn't have discrimination towards them because they are a majority, not a minority. I think the concept of having that other people that aren't, that don't look like you, are the minority. And like you said, like 46% of the LA population is Mexican. And like that's not the minority. And I feel like just having that thought of the fact that it is a minority is the problem. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be clear. Like Los Angeles got a lot of people. Like it's, it's got it's got Mexicans, Salvadorans, Guatemalans, Honduras, Cambodians. Like you know, people from Eritrea. I mean, people from all over the world come to Los Angeles. It's a wonderful, diverse city. It's, it's you know, I'm not just saying like the Mexicans are taking over. And like yeah, I don't, and I'm not trying to come off that way. But absolutely, the idea that it's minority is ridiculous. And if you think of like the white is the white is just default. Everybody else is something else. That at this point in time, California is already 62% not white. Like when you just add everybody, this is not white. And so, like, and most major cities are that way. New York's only 33% white. Chicago is only 34% white. You know, so like, let's start thinking like that. Um, yes. Um, going back, like, since like the word minority is goes back to like even colonial time to like describe like how those who were brought in slaves or those who were, cause like, yeah. But then how do we change that to become more positive since it is how, like nowadays the minority is becoming the majority. So how can we like as a whole change the negative connotation to be more positive? If that makes sense. I think we need more cultural production. I think that's the kind of the answer, that we need more films, we need more books, we need more culture, right? To like warm the hearts and minds of people. That's what is necessary for that. But there also has to be structural policies. There has to be things that change in the way things are done. You know, the people, the groups of people that are demonized most in this country um, are at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. You know, and then it comes from histories, you know, like Native Americans, African Americans. Um, many of the groups that fall into the, the category of Latino, including Mexicans and Central Americans. I mean, so like these are people who are seen as either cheap labor, a threat to the, a threat to the, the society, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that requires structural change. I think that like some of this other stuff is, is getting more platforms for people out there to do their thing and be seen and, you know, and that. But, you know, I can tell you as a working artist, there's tons of barriers that I have to go through. There's tons of hoops I have to jump. There's so many things that are constantly put in my way because they don't want to think a Mexican guy is smart. It's just that simple. They just don't. And so, like, there's a lot of struggles I have in LA. With I'm just trying to like, just trying to get a job done, and just trying to like, you know, like get people to like bring me into this project. And they, just, they don't. They're just like, yeah, but like, who are you else you working with? You know. And so I find someone else to work with, and I like make it happen. You know, like, you know, I cloak myself in whatever I have to, and I make the thing happen. Because uh, I don't, I'm, I'm, you know, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a winner, right? So like, you know, I, I'm here to win. I can't think of the like lose, but like, uh, but it's not right. It's not right that I have to do that. Not right at all. Um, do you notice a lot of either like political rhetoric or like just kind of basic sort of everyday speech and just your interactions with people um, and kind of ideological overlaps between the ways that uh, people talk about the oppression or sort of use their language to oppress both Native Americans and like um, Hispanics. Like, do you notice that there are some parallels? Because yeah. some of the quotes that you said earlier, it was like, I don't know, it kind of like clicked in my brain. I'm like, wow, like that's totally like a dual sort of way to oppress both of those groups. And I'm just curious to your thoughts on that. My thoughts on that is that I'm an Indian with a Spanish last name. I mean, like I'm part of I'm part of the original peoples of the Western Hemisphere. Yeah. That's why I have brown skin. Like, and so like I just have a Spanish last name. In many ways, I'm not in touch with like you know the original tribes and people that I come from, because it got lost through Spanish colonialism, right? And uh, it's called the Mississippi, and like I, I'm disconnected from it, right? Um, but clearly, I have European features as well. So clearly, I have Spanish ancestry. So I have both, right? But you know that's pretty common. 
Uh, and I feel as though the reason why those attacks seem so parallel is because they are. And I think that the whole of the Western Hemisphere, uh, which later shaped the whole world, is based on two of the worst things that ever happened in human history. And probably these worst things that ever happened in human history. And they're simultaneous, which is the transatlantic slave trade and the slaughter and conquest of the Americas. And these things happen at the same time. It's not like one happened before the other. I mean, the conquest begins earlier, but like when the slave trade comes in, it's not like the conquest happened and they conquered the entire continent and then they brought in the slaves. That's not what happened. They conquered pieces of it. They brought in, they brought in the enslaved people from Africa. They brought them here, and simultaneously they killed all, killed off the original inhabitants, and they keep bringing more people in the slave. Right. So that's what happens. So it's born. The entire Western Hemisphere is born of this process, and um, so that's why those attacks seem very similar especially here in, um, in Anglo society, right, in American society, in this kind of, you know, North American society. If you were to go to Mexico, if you were to go to Guatemala, if you were to go to Honduras, if you were to go to, like, Latin America, um, you know, Colombia, you know, countries, South America, Central America, Mexico, you would see a different kind of, like, caste system, uh, kind of a, a, a order of, 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 of very multi-layered kind of, you know, between the Mestizo and the Indio and the Rio and all, all these kinds of things. Um, that's different than here. But once you're here, you know what I mean? Once in the United States of America, if this thing called Mexican can be put on you, um, it's gonna, you're, you're gonna take a hit, you know? So like, you can be very pale and like, you know, just, just passing, just like living your life. And they're like, did you know, you know, like, Joe's Mexican, what? You know, like that, it, it, it shifts things. I've seen it happen, I've seen it happen to people, so. And that's not because they think we're Mediterranean, so. Who's got a question? Okay, so uh, you said before, like in 20, by 2040, the like, minority majority group would be like, pretty even. Yeah. Like, do you have any like personal predictions of like what, the, what our system would be like then? Like, so yeah, so that actually, you know, that was the part I wanted to get into my speech, but then all of a sudden I was like, you know what, it's not, I don't know what I'm doing here. So, <laughs> but like, uh, that was, that was, that is what, something I want to talk about. I thank you for asking me that. State of California, right? It's going to look more like California. I think the whole country is going to look more like California. California, Los Angeles, it has the largest prison in the world. There is a central valley where a lot of the food for the entire country comes from, and it has people who are starving in it. All these things can happen, but none of it's going to change without some type of class struggle. It's just going to, it's going to it, without fighting for the material needs that we all need, you know, nothing's going to really change. The, po the point of the speech was simply that this is the changing face of reaction. You know, this is the way reaction is changing this country. But without actually fighting for our material needs, nothing's going to change. It's just going to, like I said, it's going to be talking trucks in every corner, right? And a bunch of people that can't afford even anything. You know, so like that is what we really that those are the things that we, we need to focus on as well. I do think it's very important though to learn about you know Mexican American history um, if that is going to become one of the primary talking points of the reactionary right. But in order to in order to like win our daily bread, we're gonna fight for our daily bread.